Hello guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hidden Agendas, a game of politics. This is a three to six player board game, roughly about ages 13 and up, and it's really about 45 to an hour to play. In the game you'll be receiving a hidden agenda as a specific character, maybe the ambassador and your objective will be to create diplomatic bills, or maybe you're going to be the activist where you're going to be attempting to complete social and environmental bills. Each player is going to get a number of cards, which will be your legislative legislation, which you'll be creating three separate bills together. You'll be voting on bills to remove them and to keep them and eventually solidify one into law, with hopefully there being some portion of your agenda attached to the bill. As the game progresses from round to round, the bills are going to add up in a value for each of the different agendas, and if your agenda reaches a specific value, 10 or higher, you win the game. However, if the opposing party reaches their agenda first, they win. And of course, if you add in the two specific parties, the opposition party and the party leader, there's a little bit of an added style of play to the game as well. Will you create the best bill for your specific agenda or will you be left in the dust with nothing to show for your legislation? Work together, bribe, manipulate, and control politics all in this real life based game of hidden agendas. We'll take a look at the game right now, come do the full setup and of course the review portion oh, and how to play. Let's, let's get into it. To set up the game, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. When you're playing with a smaller number of players, you're going to be removing the opposition party and the party leader. If you're playing with a larger number of players, you will include these guys. You'll shuffle up your classified cards, reveal, place them face down, which will only then be revealed to you, the player, as well as give each player five legislation cards. You'll have the rest of the deck shuffled and set aside, along with any money that is needed, voting tokens, and the first player marker, which you can give to any player. Uh, from there, you're basically ready to begin the game of hidden agendas. So let's talk about how to play the game. And the first thing is there's a caveat that everybody gets 300 bucks as well for the setup. Now, in the game, the player who has the gavel is the player who starts with the control and they also get to start playing uh, these phases. There's a play cycle here and there are three specific phases, house phase, senate phase, and the adjournment phase. During the house phase is where you start by making the three bills. Bills are made in columns and there are three columns equaling up to three bills. Each column has three cards. The first two are face up and the third one is face down. And how it works is players are going to select cards from their hand to hopefully help with their agenda or to trick the other players by placing them either face up on the field if it's in the first two rows or face down as hidden riders. And so on my turn as the first player, I will place out one of the agenda cards and I'll place it face up in one of the bill slots. And then the next player will take their hand, they will select one of the cards and they will place it face up as well. They can choose uh, in, in kind of any order they want as long as they're making the bills go down. Um, until eventually what's gonna happen is you're going to have three bills. Everybody has played their cards and they've placed out three bills. Now, like I said before, the last three cards for each of the specific columns is going to be face down. Those are hidden agendas. You don't know specifically what party it's advocating for. And so what's going to happen is after the bills have been created, each player is going to have their opportunity to determine what bill should be removed. And they do this by debating. They have a little Senate and House debate phase where they say, I believe the first two bills are not as aggressively useful and blah, 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 and, or this bill is a terrible bill for whatever reason, right? And the person who makes the best argument or whoever you want to win is gonna be voted for. And you'll be voting with your little chips here. The player who receives the most votes, or you can use your hand, whatever, is going to receive a hundred bucks. Then it's time to kill a bill. We'll select, you will select one of the three bills provided to, to you from everybody like continually, continuously making a bill here. And then you'll place your marker on one of them that you wish to get rid of. When you wanna get rid of them, use the back side. That's the red side. It symbolizes that that is the get rid of function as opposed to the, the green, which is the keep, until all markers have been placed out. You'll check to see which one has been voted for the most. And of course, if there are ties, then the player with the gavel is the one that breaks ties. And you will remove that specific bill. And in this case, I'm removing the first bill for whatever reason. Mainly, it's probably because there are two blue agendas here. And everybody here but one player is not blue. So it's a good way to get rid of these cards. If you want, you can remove the hidden rider so that nobody knows what card that was. And you can kind of place it face down, or you can also, or you can simply discard them into the discard pile. I like the hidden information aspect. I think that's more fun. Um, another thing to note too is after you vote, 
but before you remove the bill, players can take actions in, in both phases of the game. To take actions, you're simply gonna spend money and do anything here on this list of actions. It could range anywhere from removing a player's vote um, to allowing a player to look at the hidden riders on any bill, some of them you can do before or after the vote phase. They're all unique. I mean, they, they can go and range all the way up to like a filibuster, which just kills a bill instead of allowing it to be passed. But once you've gone through the creating the bill, debating and giving somebody a hundred bucks, then voting, taking actions and resolving by killing the bill, you'll move on to the next phase, which is very similar. You'll debate once again, and this is for which bill should pass. I think this one should pass. This one gives us more money and you'll vote somebody's going to get a hundred bucks. You're then going to um, vote to see a bill pass and players will then once again, place their markers on the bill they think should pass. And then action phase. Look at the back here, your TPD actions, spend the money that you'd like going around. If you spend an action, the next time it comes around to you, you can take another action. If you pass, you're out of actions, you have to stop. Then you'll finish by finalizing. Determine which of the bills has more votes. The player uh, who had the, the bill that has the most votes is going to pass on and you're going to reveal all of the cards after removing the previous bill. You'll get rid of the previous bill, including the hidden rider. You are then going to keep the next bill and reveal them. When you reveal, you're going to be going into the adjournment phase. This is going to allow you to reveal any passive um, hidden rider cards, uh, effects are going to trigger, etc., etc. So in this case, funding, all players get 300 bucks, which case everybody in the game would get $300 towards their actions for a, a later round. You're then uh, going to place any colored cards together. The reds will go with reds, green will go with green. You can remove the money cards and then set these guys aside. Okay, now we know that social environment has one point and military has one point. There's actually a specific ability too. This says that the speaker token changes directions. So as opposed to going clockwise, now it's going to go counterclockwise. So what's gonna happen is at the end of this phase here, we're gonna to check to see something. Does any specific party or political agenda have five or more points? If so, we're gonna have government shut down. If not, we're going to pass the gavel unless somebody hits 10 points. If that happens, the game is just instantly over. And you'll pass the gavel and you'll rinse and repeat the phases. You'll go through the house phase, the senate phase, and then you'll clean up and check points. Five points for shutdown, 10 points for a win. And remember, it always works like that. 10 points instantly allows a specific party to win the game. However, shutdown is pretty simple as well. Shutdown actually will end the game in a number of rounds, with each round you presenting a unique aspect to it. It might be that now you're gonna only get two bills as opposed to three, or there's gonna be more hidden rider cards, or each round you're gonna shuffle the discard pile with your deck and you're gonna get new cards, and they stack on top of each other, giving you new unique aspects to the round as the rounds play out. Basically, at the end of the game, if, if by the time the shutdown happens, you'll just check to see who has the most points. Or if at any point during the shutdown somebody hits 10 points, that player is the winner. All while remembering that you can always flip over your agenda card to gain its specific revealability and passive benefit for as long as it's on the field. And that's how you play Hidden Agendas. First to 10 is the winner. Hidden Agendas is a game of treachery, deceit, lies, and money basically the bread and butter of our political system. How this works is players are creating bills, they're trying to pass their agendas and remain hidden for as long as humanly possible. And once people kind of figure them out, they're gonna reveal their class, they're gonna gain their benefits, and they're gonna to continue to push for their victory, utilizing hidden writers. The hidden documents inside of a bill that people don't usually check to hopefully get them passed to thusly allow them to win the game. Uh, this game can also come with specific classes like the uh, op opposition party, which doesn't want the um, main party to win, and the main party to win by having a specific agenda work towards them in their goal. So players might cooperate to some extent in attempting to prevent the main party or opposition party from winning the game. While each player individually, for the most part, is going for their own unique agenda. They could be an activist, they could be a, a diplomatic person, they could be looking to be uh, into military or special interests. They all have their own kind of 
pushed they're kind of looking towards. Uh, this game is also a game of money because money involves, it incorporates power with, with the money. And so if you have a lot of money, you can do things like quash bills or make people change their votes by bribery or manipulation. You're also able to make deals in the game as well as you push throughout the game. It's a very simple game. There are a lot of phases in the game and uh, a lot of like individual like aspects to each phase, but the way it works is pretty simple. You'll play cards out from your hand up until they make three bills. Once you make three bills, you debate and give somebody a hundred bucks. Then you vote, then you do actions, then you resolve. And you'll do that again for the next phase, but in this case, instead of removing a bill, it's for the one you want to pass. And of course, you'll do actions and you'll resolve. And after you resolve, you'll draw back up to those five cards. You'll pass your gavel, normally going clockwise, and continue once again until the a bill, a party hits five points, in which case the shutdown happens, or 10 points, in which case the game is over and that specific political agenda is the winner of the game. All while utilizing your abilities, checking for any passive effects or gaining money from the cards from the bills that have been passed, which in general can be helpful to everybody or specifically to one party or kind of a mix of both. Working with certain players, you might need to do so throughout the game and that's how the balancing the game kind of takes place. If you're behind in this game, it's more likely that people will kind of work to your aid at the end, pushing your agendas through as opposed to the more popular party with more agendas laid out in the battlefield because people can see this is what this is. It is a battlefield. There are unique amounts of value that are currently being strewed across the board and players are readily aware of this. The shutdown is my favorite part of the game because it triggers unique aspects to the game, allowing to like gain cards back that have already been played, allowing for less bills, more hidden riders, getting the game tighter and dangerous and a quicker victory. It's, it, it kind of not only makes a countdown for the game, but it also kind of pushes people towards being a little more nasty. This is a game of devi de deviousness and bribes and meanness and specific ways you can kind of mess with players. If you have a lot of money, being able to quash a bill is very powerful or change a vote. Preventing players from being able to change their vote or um, being able to change your own vote is very necessary. Being able to even look at these hidden rider cards can be very powerful. These cards range from one to three points for each political agenda, as well as one to three hundred dollars you can get as well. You can bribe people by giving them lots of money and then with your hidden rider, you'll have a specific unique agenda that you want accomplished from there. What's also cool is I like to discard the hidden rider so that players don't know what factions have played face down there. A little bit of memory in this game, not much, but the idea of you have to remember who played what agenda and when they get flipped over, know that that player is going for maybe that specific one. There's also bluffing and trickery where some players might be going for one agenda, but and then afterwards they start to switch it up or vice versa, in which case their agenda completely changes. And hopefully you win the game after all this craziness. If you like a game of bribery and deduction, a little bit of like treachery and false promises, there's voting. There's even a little bit of a social phase where you're gonna be giving people money, which, is, is okay in this game. Really what it does is it makes sure that the money is more distributed between players who are losing. Usually I'm gonna vote for almost always the person who has the least amount of money or is in a kind of like not as far ahead. So basically it pushes people who are winning the game to kind of associate and help with other players in that way. Um, but it works well. And I do like that aspect of the game, even though it just doesn't seem as interesting as being able to kind of socialize with players as much as I would like to. I made the best argument, I should get the vote. No, no, it's gonna go, to the, and, and that kind of makes sense in politics as well. It does have a ring of politics in this game as far as money is power, control is power, how much of the political agendas you've pushed through, and of course, adding in the specific party leader and opposition factions kind of change the game in a way that kind of makes people cooperate a little bit more with each other. But overall, it's a fun game. It has unique aspects to it, and it's a strong recommendation for those of you guys who like a little bit of tableau control and voting and deception and all that good stuff. Yeah, Hidden Agendas is a solid game. I strongly recommend you take a look at it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hidden Agendas by Big Boom Games. If you're looking for this game, there's a link down below in the description, as well as if you like this channel, hit that like button, and of course the subscribe button, along with the bell notification button, so you can see more of our videos. We produced a live stream of this video, of uh, this game, so you can see us play this game, and determine if it's a game that you would be most interested in for yourself. You can check out any of our channels, it's on Twitter, it's on, or X, I should say, it is on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch as well. All right, guys, that's all I for this time and as always I look forward to passing my hidden agendas secretly along with you next time.